Hello there everybody, Sam Strings here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review of an American locomotive. So I've shown today's model in I think two videos before, running sessions and other reviews and that sort of thing, and I wasn't expecting it, but loads and loads of people sent me comments about it saying how much they liked it, how much they'd like me to review it, and uh, so on and so forth. So I was amazed at how popular today's Loco was, so much so that I have decided to review it for you today. So the Loco in question, if you don't know already, is this. Now, you're probably going to be a little confused if you know the local I'm talking about. Uh, so, unfortunately, yes, this is not the correct box. Now, I bought this from America, and if you remember when I reviewed the Mahano 440, um, that was actually from the same seller. I bought two locos, and they shipped them for me all the way from America to uh, over here in the UK. So the 440 was one of the engines, and this one inside here was the other one. So this is a Mahano loco as well, even though it is a Mantua box, and it is a Mahano Camelback. And if you want to know what a Camelback is, if you don't know already, stay tuned, and I will talk more about that in just a second. But unfortunately, the seller did not have the correct box for the Camelback back so unfortunately it got sent in this Mantua box however it was a real bargain I think if I got the conversion right it only cost about 40 quid which isn't too bad especially considering that it was shipped all the way from America so really really good value for money if you've already seen this loco you know that it's quite a good one it's not necessarily all that realistic but it is quite a good one and so I hope you're going to enjoy seeing it today so it was a real bargain real real bargain and uh, it's a loco that I like very much and I know that others do too so let's take this out and see what this one's like the Mahano Camelback all right, so yeah, even though this isn't in the right box, I thought it would still be worth taking a quick look at the box because just look at it. I mean, it's probably the grandest loco box I've ever seen. It's got this sort of leather finish, gold lining. It looks as though there's some sort of crown jewels inside or something like that. Really, really nice packaging. It's quite unusual though. It says ages six to adult, which doesn't really roll off the tongue. Why they didn't just put ages six plus, I don't know. But uh, anyway, that made me giggle very slightly. And then on the end of the box, get a load of this. So you've got a product number there and it says Great Northern 442 Atlantic with tender. Now, if you're from the UK, you're going to be thinking, what the hell? Because we do have a Great Northern Atlantic in this country, or at least we did. Uh, they're really, really beautiful things. And uh, I thought when I saw that, what on earth were Mantua doing producing one of those? They don't produce British stuff as far as I know. So anyway, I punched the uh, product code in and this is what came up. So by massive coincidence, it seems that in America or somewhere else, there was also a Great Northern, which had Atlantics with tenders. Uh, so yeah, I got a bit excited. I thought, blimey, I'm going to have to find one of these if Mantua did a British logo. But uh, no, apparently it didn't. But uh, either way, anyway, I digress. Shall we get this out then? So let's open the very, very grand box. And inside you've got very slightly less grand packaging. It's just uh, a bit of foam, which covers up the loco. And I will just read what this one says here. So it says, to remove the locomotive from protective styrofoam in insert, place face down on a sturdy padded surface and push the locomotive out using the thumb holes located on the back of the insert. Um, well, I'd rather not do that, to be honest. I think it's going to be a little quicker just to do that, you know. But uh, no, whatever, whatever you want to do. So let me bring this out so I can show you up close. So here is the actual locomotive that came in that box. And as you can see, Yes, it's not an Atlantic. No, that's true, but it is a very, very unusual loco. As you can see, the cab's in the middle there. And as I was saying, Mahano locos are quite inexpensive. They're quite cheap. They're a bit like the Hornby Railroad range over here in the UK. But as you can see, this one is quite detailed. There's an awful lot of complexity going on there, both with the livery and the detail. And it just looks absolutely bizarre, really, really weird. But second of all, it looks great, doesn't it? I mean, there's, there's something very American about it. You would never mistake this, for example, as a British loco, would you? It's just completely unlike anything I've had before. And for that, I really do love it. I mean, it's great looking, isn't it? Really, really great. So I'm gonna get this up against the white background in just a second to show you this in a bit more detail. But first of all, here's a little bit of general information about the Camelbacks, and it is general information because this doesn't really represent any specific Camelback as far as I know. So, as I might have mentioned a few weeks ago in my American week, the Camelback is a name given to locomotives whose cabs are in the centre of the engine rather than at the back. So, on engines with very, very wide fireboxes, it just turned out more practical to mount the cab in front of the firebox and therefore the Camelback was born. 
However, this design did bring with it several safety concerns though. Uh, for example, the engineer would be placed very, very close to the side rods of the Loco, which would make them a prime target uh, if any moving parts should break, for example, and come flying up and hitting them or anything like that. And also communication was a serious problem as well between the different crew members, because of course there's a second cab at the back, as you can see on this one. And I suppose that probably caused some safety problems as well. And so by 1927, the building of new Camelbacks was completely banned by the interstate State Commerce Commission, uh, which is quite interesting. So you won't get very uh, modern camelbacks, unfortunately, because they were all banned. Now, all sorts of different camelbacks existed uh, with various different wheel configurations, including 040s, 060s, 080s, and 260s, as you can see with this one. It's another mogul. <laughs> I quite like moguls at the moment. Now, as a 260 camelback, this particular model does seem to bear quite strong resemblance to several camelback 260 designs, including ones from the Elizabeth Port Shops, Dickinson and Cook, and they're all built around the time of the 20th century. I can't say for sure which version this one is, if, if any, but uh, it sort of seems to represent a general mogul camelback at least. Okay, so there she is then, the very, very beautiful Mahano Camelback up against the white background. And yes, it's very, very unconventional looking, but I must say I absolutely love it. It is beautiful, I think, in my opinion. You might not feel the same though, so I will put a poll in the top corner right now to uh, so that you can let me know whether or not you find this beautiful, or perhaps somewhere in between, I'll include that as an option. So as you can see, yes, quite an interesting looking loco, quite an interesting livery as well. You can see it has B and O, R, R on the side. And for those who might not know, although most people do that stands for the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad and very well done to everybody who correctly guessed that in the American running session in the poll I put up it was amazing how many people knew uh, the correct answer uh, to be fair the other answers I put in the poll were sort of bread and onions and things so it's no surprise really that most people got it right but either way yeah that's what it stands for now to any American viewers that actually know what they're talking about, there is a bit of an elephant in the room with this, so I thought I would discuss that straight away, get it off my chest, and that is that supposedly this livery is completely incorrect for this loco. Now, I'm no expert on this at all, so this is not my own information, but so many people that have seen this loco in my previous videos have all told me this livery is not correct. So whether or not the Baltimore and Ohio didn't have any camelbacks, or whether they just did and uh, they didn't have any like this, I'm not absolutely sure, but yes, apparently this is a fictional livery and it seems that that's something Mahano did quite a lot they would design quite a standard looking body shell and uh, perhaps a couple of different chassis for it and they would just churn them out in lots of different liveries as quite inexpensive models so that lots of people could get a model from their local railroad or something like that I think that's basically the way they did it however you would think that it's quite a cheap and nasty model if that's the way they do things but just looking at it you can see that it really screams quality it's just minor things so the tender wheels for example example look they're all made of metal and by the way there are uh, pickups on the tender wheels as well so you've got really really good reliability the paintwork is done to an extremely high standard you've got the uh, lettering there on the side of the center cab you've got the number also on I think that's the lamp uh, the wheels are also really really nicely painted I quite like this yellow paintwork on the wheels uh, certainly never seen anything like that before certainly not on the uh, British locos either uh, but that's quite cool to see the bell as you can see is made of plastic and unlike that uh, Backman Prairie which we shouldn't really mention um, but unlike that Backman Prairie you can see that the bell has been nicely moulded in fact it almost looks as though it's made of metal so it's done really really well and also just the complexity of the model look at the side of the smoke box and the area just behind you've got what looked like uh, condensing equipment or perhaps some sort of lubricators I'm not 100% sure but either way very very finely moulded pieces You've got all sorts of different handrails, for example, here, which appear to be separately fitted. Very, very good. Inside the cab, there are no glazed windows. In fact, there's no interior of any kind, unfortunately. I think the motor must be somewhere inside there, which is a little bit of a shame, but uh, again, for a budget model, that isn't too bad. However, on the back cab, you can see that there is a little bit of cab detail inside there. It's uh, quite an uncomfortable looking cab, isn't it there? And I suppose that's where the firemen, I guess, would stand, if you still call them firemen in the US. I'm not absolutely sure. Uh, either way, that's where the uh, the fuel would be taken care of, and I suppose the engineer or driver would be in the centre cab. So you can understand how communication might be a problem with that. 
Anyway, so let's take a look around the front. The smoke box door is quite basic. I mean, there's quite a lot of molded detail on there, but there's certainly not a lot of separately fitted work going on. But again, for a budget model, that's what you'd expect. Above there, though, on the front of the lamp, you can see that there is actually an LED inside there, which is great. So hopefully that's going to work when we get the loco running. And a little bit below there, again, look at the complexity. You've got the steps coming down from the running plate there. And below, you can see the cow catcher and the sort of pilot area is all really, really nicely detailed. There's actually quite a lot of separate fitted work going on there including a handrail it looks like which also appears to be separately fitted so yeah I mean the loco is really really nicely detailed it's certainly not accurate if what people have told me is true but uh, it sort of doesn't matter you know it's just something I really enjoy looking at and uh, well so far I've really enjoyed running it as well so yeah it's cool looking it might not be accurate it might not be in a realistic livery but uh, you know if people enjoy it and if people enjoy seeing it which I think they do then uh, it, 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 you can't go wrong really can you at least not in my opinion okay so let's have a quick look at the tender then now the paintwork here is probably the most eye-catching so as you can see you've got the running number there and the Baltimore and Ohio lettering uh, really quite nicely done you can look good and close at that and there's nothing wrong at all with that there's quite a lot of molded detail on the tender nothing really separately fitted you've got quite a lot of riveting on the side as you can see so it's reasonably impressive around the back you've got a ladder it is just part of the molding but I suppose that's okay there's not a great deal to see in terms of underframe detail although I suppose the bogies are relatively nice and detailed yeah you can't really fault that can you uh, the coal in the top again this is completely different to the British locos the size of that coal load is absolutely massive um, some of our biggest British locos didn't have a coal bunker that big and uh, yet this one is huge so again that just shows you the uh, the size of the uh, American railroads I suppose and just how far these locos would have to go on one fill up of coal it's quite impressive that and uh, yeah I think that's basically it you've got this sort of knuckle type coupling if that's the right thing to say it's the proper one it's the one that you're supposed to look out for if uh, my friend Andrew Keeley is right I think he is they're the best couplings that I've come across at least on the American stuff so yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I've got to say, I think. It just looks the part, doesn't it? And for 40 quid, you can't go wrong. So if you fancy one of these, if you like the look of it, keep an eye trained on eBay. They do come up once in a while. As I say, there's lots of different liveries out there, so you've got a bit of a choice. There's quite a few. I think this is the this is the favourite for me, just because of the colour scheme and whatnot. But there is a lot, so keep an eye out if you fancy one, and I'm sure you'll be able to find one for a decent price. For now then, let's get back onto the railway itself. Let's try a little bit of performance and see how this thing runs. Uh, from what I remember, it's pretty good. All right, so there she is then, the Mahano Camelback, down onto the track, ready for her first test. And she, today, is going to be hauling some of these American boxcars. Now, there's a slight issue with these, because, unfortunately, I think all of them are a little bit too late for this loco. This loco, obviously, being from the 1920s or before. I think these boxcars are a lot more modern than that. Uh, unfortunately, though, there's not a lot I can do about that, because I don't really have any other American boxcars. These are all I've got. So it was a toss-up between use some American ones or do some British ones. So I went for the American ones, but I do apologise that those are not quite accurate. But then again, we were looking at a loco which doesn't really have an accurate livery anyway, so hopefully that doesn't matter too much. Okay, so very quickly then, the mechanism is very, very good. So we've got pickups going to each of the driving wheels, as you'd expect, and also pickups going to the tender as well. So you've got uh, two pickups uh, on the tender going to each track. So that's really, really good. It means that the loco runs really, really nice and reliably without cutting out on point work or anything like that. Inside the loco, it is just a basic cam motor. I think it's just a three-pole motor, which goes, uh, well, it has a worm on it, obviously, and just drives the wheel set directly. Quite basic, but also quite effective, as we're going to see. Unfortunately, no proper bearings on the wheel set, but they do sit into nice, uh, I think, round uh, holes in the chassis I think that's correct uh, but either way it seems to be a good and reliable runner as you will have seen if you've seen this in previous videos and for now let's do a little bit of a slow speed test and see how this one runs and I think given the price you might be quite uh, impressed by this turning it up there we go so look at that that is just such a good slow crawl isn't it look how smooth it is as well no jerkiness to it really once you get beyond the slowest of the crawls let's bring it back I'll get it back into shot a bit and then we'll try a real crawl again. And again, that uh, the sort of black and yellow on the wheels really does look unusual on this. I love it. There we go. Look at that. That's a great crawl, isn't it? I mean, that's up there with the best of them. There's very, very few models that can crawl more slowly and more reliably than that. That is just incredible. Really, really good. So I think that's probably better than the 440 from Mahano that I've reviewed. Really, really good. 
So there we go, that's that. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to back this up to the box cars and we'll see how she gets on hauling them. And by the way, I have already measured the pulling power of this loco and it weighs in at 0.34 newtons. So that's a little bit lower than the last mogul that I looked at, which was the Backman K3, which came in at 0.4 newtons. So there we go, that seemed to couple nice and reliably and it is right on the dead zone of the express point there. So what I might do is start it off really slowly. Uh, I don't really know whether it's gonna manage all of these box cars because they are quite old and crusty and uh, yeah, quite a bit of drag on them. Uh, but let's crawl forwards anyway. Oh, it probably is wheel slipping, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but the point is it didn't seem to be cutting out on the express points, which is good. Oh, it's actually managed to save itself there. I didn't touch it. So, I mean, it's not terribly powerful and it's not going to be because it's a reasonably lightweight loco. Not terribly light, but uh, certainly not as heavy as the Backman K3 that we looked at, which is the last mogul of that size, really, uh, to feature on the channel. But it's certainly not too bad. So, quite pleased with that. And as you can see, she is shifting these boxcars with not too much effort. So, the theme for today's running session is going to be fictional slash inaccurate slash unoriginal liveries. So, see which ones you can spot. There is an odd one out. I will give you a couple of examples, though, just because it's a bit of a weird theme to follow. So, first of all, we have the Hogwarts Express. Now, in real life, there was a loco that was painted into the Hogwarts Express colours, Alton Hall, and she still like it today. However, that livery is not native to the Great Western Hall class, or indeed Castle class, with this one. Uh, so, that counts as an unoriginal livery. So let's get that one off. And then on the inside line, we have yet another locomotive. So this is an LNER B12, and as you can see, this one is in BR Blue. Now, of course, as you know, BR Blue was a real livery that really did exist. However, it was never a livery that the B12 carried, so this one counts as an inaccurate livery. So as I say, see which other ones you can spot, and uh, there is one that does have an original livery on it. So uh, see if you can spot it, and let me know which one that was in the comments. Let's go and chase the camel back then and see how she's getting on. So there you are then. I wonder what people really think of this. I think Americans love them. I don't know whether my British viewers will like them or not. I tell you what, let's put up a poll. Would you buy one or would you avoid one? For the right price. <laughs> all right, here's the question. Here's the better question. If I gave you one for free, would you keep it or would you sell it? That's the question. That, that, will, that will really reveal whether or not people like these or just say they like them. So there we go, that's my question. <laughs> there we go, Hogwarts Castle. Now that is a powerful 460. Extremely powerful, that one. I think probably the most powerful I've got. Very, very crazy, that one. Camelback's not particularly powerful, but the length of this train isn't too bad, I don't think, for a loco that's reasonably lightweight. So, certainly can't complain at that, really. And it has been probably years since this B12 has featured in a video, which is a travesty, really, because she really is beautiful, isn't she? Despite the livery. Really love that one. And bonus points to anyone who can comment below and tell me which train set this B12 came from. I'll give you a clue. It begins with A. See if anyone gets it. I think they will, because it's quite a popular old train set. And there we go, this shot shows you the lamp on the front. So it does work, as you can see, and it's quite a nice orangey colour, as though there's a flame behind it, so that's quite good. Nice attention to detail there. So it's a fun model to run, it's fun, it's got lights, it looks cool. Yeah, it's fun. All right, so here are some of my ratings then for the Mahano Camelback, a really beautiful thing, I think, actually. Uh, so, detail three out of five. It was actually a little bit better than expected on the detail front, but obviously it's not quite at the level of some more premium models, let's say. It certainly didn't have a painted cab. Uh, there was a lot of plastic work, for example. Quite basic in a sense, but better than you might expect for the money. So I've given it a middle-of-the-road three-star. Performance, though, five-star. I think I have to give it a five-star. Its slow speed is absolutely fantastic. The pulling power is reasonably good um, for a loco of that size. 
and it just seems to be super, super reliable. So I can't fault the performance. I've got to give it a five star, despite it being such a cheap model. The mechanism then, I'm going to give it a four out of five, a four star. The mechanism's okay. It does have tender pickups, which is very, very good. However, it does only have a three pole motor, which is quite basic and there's no proper bearings or anything like that in the chassis. However, it does perform just as it's supposed to, but uh, I don't think it's the best mechanism we've ever seen or anything near it. But yeah, four star there. The quality then, I've also given it a four star. I think the only real criticism is that it's all made in plastic, which is exactly what you'd expect, once again, for a model of that price. Um, but I suppose the top quality marks will go to models that have a lot of die cast on them and that sort of thing. But the fact that this hasn't isn't a problem at all, I don't think. Value then, now I paid 40 quid for this. I can't find these new anymore at the moment, so I don't know how much these would have been uh, new, but I don't expect it would have been an awful lot more than that, perhaps double, perhaps 80 quid. But even so, it's very, very good, I think, for the money. Uh, but for 40 quid, I've given that a five star. I don't think anyone will deny that that is a pretty good price for what uh, what is quite a decent loco. Overall then, that is 8.25 out of 10. I think that's probably the highest score I've given to a budget loco of late, so that's pretty good. Into the ranking it goes then, that's sixth, there we go, just above the Hornby 101 and below the Hornby Hall class. Yes, it's uh, quite highly ranked, that one. Some good old speed coming out of that Hogwarts Express. Certainly a speedy one, that. Glad to see her running again. All right then, folks. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, for any of my American viewers, there we go. That one was for you. I hope you enjoyed seeing a loco from your native land. Uh, and I certainly enjoy showing them as well. They, they certainly make a nice change for me. Uh, obviously, I don't do them too often, though. So if you're someone who uh, just likes British locos and you refuse to watch anything else, well, first of all, thank you for watching this. Uh, but second of all, don't worry, I will do some British stuff again pretty soon. But for now, thank you for your company. As I say, I hope you enjoyed that. And I will catch you all very, very soon. All right. Cheers, everybody. See you next time.